Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to use the Design Space Mug Design Template for Infusible Ink Sheets, but I'm going to use it with sublimation. So if you'd like to learn how easy it is to do, keep watching! So starting on a clean canvas, the first thing you're going to do is click Projects on your left hand toolbar and we're going to type Mugs. So in your selection you have two blank mug templates. Uh, I might as well mention that you can use any of these that are already pre-designed for print and cut with sublimation, but you will have to do some resizing. We'll get to that on another video. We have the mug design setup that you see here with the teal mug. And we also have this blank called drawn mug design setup. I'll click on that one because I want to show you if you're more comfortable using a full template, you can use this one to design your sublimation mugs, but you will have to resize it. And I have shown you how to do that in a separate video. It's here on my channel. I'll also put a link to it in the description under this video. You still want to go ahead and choose the correct mug size. This template is actually designed for infusible ink markers and pens. So it will need to be resized to use it for print and cut sublimation. So let's go back. In this video, I want to show you how to use this template. You see the teal area. That area is a perfect size to use for print and cut sublimation. So you won't have any resizing to do. You will need to select the size of mug you're using, either small or large. You have a selection of edges, ripped, scalloped, wavy, zigzag, or straight. The thing is, if you're doing a white background with individual images, it doesn't matter which edge you choose because white is not going to transfer to your mug. If you're going to use a colored background, you want to select an edge, either go straight or choose one of the other edges that you like. I really like the large ripped edge. So for fun, I'm going to choose that one and we'll click customize. Here it is. If I select just that teal area, you can see up on your top toolbar that it's already a good size for sublimation print and cut. You won't have any resizing to do. So let's see if I change my background to white. White, as I mentioned, white doesn't transfer, so it doesn't matter what your edge looks like, it's not going to show. If I change the color to, let's say, yellow, when you sublimate this onto your mug, you will see that ripped edge with the yellow background, or red, or green, or whatever color background you choose to use. All you're going to do at this point is insert the images. Let's say a Star Wars image. I love Star Wars. I'll just choose any Star Wars images. I'll choose two and insert image. These are big, so let's shrink them down. Let's say I'm using a white background and I'm using individual images. I'm just going to place them wherever I want them. We can resize them to fit larger on the mug. Let's say we make this one a little bit bigger too. You want to make sure that you're staying within these torn edges or within your scallop, but within your edge, you want to make sure you're staying within. We'll go over to the layers panel. I'm going to turn off hide this layer and turn off large ripped mug wrap 
all I'm left with is the background and the images I want to sublimate. At this point, I'm just going to drag around these all together, right click and flatten. Send to make it. And you see that it's going to cut out the perfect size to fit my mug. Never forget to mirror. Let's click cancel. Okay, I want to show you another little trick. Let's say we go back to mugs again. I'll choose this one again. I'm going to choose a large ripped edge and click customize. And there's my template again. I'm going to my upload screen because I have a background that I want to use with this template. Here it is, it's very large, so we'll shrink it down some. I go to my layers panel and I click hide this layer, I turn it off, and large ripped mug wrap, I turn that off and I'm left with just this shape again. I'm gonna to send to the front and place it over this background that I have, that I want to use. That looks good. I'm going to select all, align and center, right click and slice. We'll take this away, we don't need it. We no longer need this. And this is what we're left with. So I've managed to have those ripped edges on this full wrap. If I unhide these, we can select all, align, and center. And you can see that the image is going to take up the entire wrap. And once again, we check the top toolbar, and it's a perfect size for print and cut with sublimation. So I'll go back to my layers panel and turn off those two. Hide this layer and large ripped mug wrap. I'll click make it. I'll turn on mirror and click continue. I'm going to choose send to printer. You can leave bleed on because for this ripped edge, I want to cut it out with my maker. I don't want to try cutting that by hand, so I'll leave the bleed on. Make sure that I've selected my sublimation printer and use system dialog and click print. Someone mentioned that when they click on layout, they don't see the options that I see on mine. Well, that happens to me sometimes too. And all I have to do is click cancel, go back to send to printer and choose it again. Choose my correct sublimation printer again. Turn on use system dialog again and click print again. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but it does. So just click cancel and do it again. Now I have color options. I'll choose that. Advanced settings and change Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB. Go back to color options, click on that. Print settings. I always choose to use presentation paper matte I find that I've had the best color results by using that paper and change my quality to high. I'm going to click print and send it to print out. I'm all ready to cut. My image is printing from my sublimation printer now. So I'm going to select my Cricut Maker. And I've tried a few different settings for cutting this sublimation paper. And I find that I have the best results by choosing laser copy paper. So I'm going to cut out this image. I'll switch to my overhead camera and we're going to press this design onto a mug. And we're ready to press our mug. You can see that I've cut this template out with my maker because I wanted to keep these ripped edges. I could have just taken scissors and cut off the registration marks and used it like that. It's mirrored, 
so we'll be in the right direction when it's on my mug. I also wanted to emphasize that these templates are meant for infusible ink. I've seen some people mention that um, why doesn't it fit properly for sublimation? Why do we have to make changes and that? Because they are intended for infusible ink. So if you're going to use them for print and cut with sublimation, you are going to have to make a few little changes. But if that's how you want to do it, it's worth it. So I have my mug. I'm just going to remember to make sure that there is no lint or paper, no residue on it. I want it to be super clean. I use a lint roller for that. And I also take the little t-shirt sample from the infusible ink sheets. And I also wipe it down to make sure there's no fingerprints or handprints on it. We don't want that to press into the ink or the ink to press into those fingerprints. So that's all ready to go. So I haven't changed the size of this template at all. I've used it the way it comes in design space. And you can see that it fits really nicely. We're just gonna center it for pressing. I've seen people try to make the templates longer so they wrap farther over closer to the handle, but you need to remember that there is an opening here for your handle to fit. So if you're expanding the size, the length of your printout, the ink is going to be outside the pressing area, so you're not going to get a nice crisp edge. You're going to get blurry edges, and that doesn't work. That doesn't look nice. So you want to make sure that you stay within the correct parameters. So this fits nicely. I've got it centered on my mug. So I'm just going to start with my heat resistant tape. And we're going to make sure that the template is well attached to the mug. We don't want it to move. We want to make sure it's nice and tight, nice and flat. So that's one side. I'm just going to double check that this is smooth all the way around. And I'm going to tape the second side. That looks nice and straight. One more piece to keep this in place. I want my edges to be nice and crisp. We'll turn that back on because it's hot and sitting, so it turned off. Tape on the bottom to make sure nothing moves. And another piece on the top. go and don't forget your butcher paper you want to make sure that your butcher paper covers the area with your ink I cut my butcher paper down to nine and a half inches to make sure I've got a good cover on those ink edges we don't want to have a mishap where you have some ink transferring inside your mug press and having it end up on the next project that you do. So you want to be sure to use butcher paper. I've seen people ask about using parchment paper. Parchment paper contains silicone, so it doesn't absorb moisture. So it's not a good option. You want to make sure that you're using butcher paper. Just like you do with infusible ink. Make sure that's nicely adhered. I use a lot of heat resistant tape. It's worth it to make sure everything stays in place. That's on good. And the bottom so nothing shifts. And that looks good. 
This piece looks like it could be a little tighter. So we'll just add some tape there. And we're all set, all ready to go. And close it. This is going to take about five minutes. So I'll be back to show you when it's ready. And we're on our last indicator light. It's been about five minutes. So we're just waiting to be ready. The mug is going to be very hot when I take it out. So we are going to have to let it cool before we can unwrap it safely. I'm anxious to see how this one turns out. And there we go. So let's try unwrapping this mug. It's still a bit hot. I should probably wait longer, but I'm anxious to see it. So we'll get rid of some of this tape. Have to be careful. I don't want to scratch my mug. Let's see if we can lift any of this carefully without doing any damage. There we go, we should be able to get this off. I'm tearing my butcher paper all apart as I'm removing it. But that's okay. One off. If I can lift it, and I can. There we go. That's the butcher paper gone. And let's see about taking off this template. Ooh, it's going to be very nice. Still a little warm but I'm impatient so I probably shouldn't start there I'll start on the bottom make sure I don't scratch anything unwrapped and here's my mug Star Wars isn't it terrific and look I have my ripped edge because I showed you how to slice that shape out of a full image it's really easy to do and keep the torn edge or the scalloped edge whatever you'd like to do and because I use that template as is without resizing it I'm not outside my pressing zone, so I have nice, crisp edges. I don't have any faded edges. So there we go. I hope this video is going to help you use the Design Space mug templates with your sublimation projects. Thank you for watching.